Jet has gained a somewhat controversial reputation in the Fallout community due to a few misconceptions and conflicting information inside of the lore. Most people that I've talked to about this mostly don't care much and dismiss it as a developer issue or a misunderstanding, which I completely understand, because at the end of the day, Fallout is a video game, and the story of one tiny aspect such as this doesn't affect the majority of people's experience while playing. On the other side of this same coin, myself and a bunch of other people enjoy Fallout because of its extremely deep lore, which spans across multiple games and coming up to almost a quarter century of hard work from multiple different companies and hundreds of people. Out of all this lore though, why is Jet, a simple chem that can only affect the player's abilities depending on the game of course, for a temporary amount of time, the center of controversy? Well, to begin to answer this question, we need to go back in time over 20 years ago to the year 1998. Fallout 2 released at the beginning of December of 98. This was the eagerly awaited sequel to the original Fallout game. Much like the original game, Fallout 2 had a main focus on roleplay progression and turn-based combat, but it also added a much more dense environment compared to the first game, as well as some pulp culture references and a much larger story overall. Fallout 2 was developed by Black Isle Studios, which was a division of Interplay Entertainment at the time, which produced the original Fallout game. Fallout 2 had a few different designers, including Matt Norton, Fergus Urquhart, and Chris Avalone. Remember this last one, because he's going to come up later in the video. Fallout 2 is a great game with many in-game aspects and original lore that's expanded, but we're starting here because Fallout 2 is where, chronologically speaking, this is the first time Jet has ever appeared inside of a Fallout game. In Fallout 2, Jet can be found all throughout the wasteland, but the Chosen One's travels eventually lead them to the city of New Reno. New Reno is a city of vice, run by multiple crime families. One of these families, the Mordinos, has an off-site stable where they keep one of their employees. His name is Myron. He's a boy genius that was credited with creating Jet. We can talk to Myron and get his full story of how Jet was created. Christ. Well, when I came across the Mordino family way back when, they were farming peyote cacti and trying to sell it to tourists as the Reno experience. <laughs> Total bullshit. I mean, peyote? Come on. It isn't even half the strength of, say, uh, old school LSD. Plus, a peyote trip is too long. The profits and fast turnaround in high addiction, like uh, barbiturates before the big one, you know? Problem is... In the new climate, we can't grow most of the veggies needed for the best drugs. Couldn't grow coca plants, opium poppies. Oh man, did we try. <laughs> so we figured our best bet was shrooms. You can grow them if you use plenty of Brahmin shit as fertilizer. Plus hallucinogens of low overhead. So I started experimenting with derivatives of lysergic acid, diethylamide, and psilocybin. Still, I really wanted to whip up a hard hitter that didn't rely on veggie extracts. Man, was I an idiot, because the answer turned out to be the extracts, or more precisely, what they were growing in. Before the big ones, some meat companies were experimenting with a cheap protein extract for growing food, but they had to ditch it. One little skin bacteria contaminates it, and it's all screwed. The contaminated version acted like an amphetamine when ingested. A little sad effect. <laughs> Don't ask, it's uh, technical. When they first screwed up, they contaminated tons of that shit. And rather than ditch it, they fed it to their Brahmin herds to try and recoup their losses. Now you see, old Jesus Mordino wanted something that the Redding miners would get addicted to fast and make them work harder. So I said, no prob, right? Well, it wasn't too hard to come up with a good upper. A sample of that pre-war protein extract corrupted and bam, decent amphetamine. See, we started experimenting with the Brahmin shit as fertilizer for the shrooms. Except, get this, then we noticed the slaves working the fertilizer vats were getting high from the fumes. By putting tons of Brahmin shit in the vats, we found out that the fumes give more than enough of a kick. Eureka! <laughs> Literally. Of course, we had to test to get the mix right. Mmm, about a hundred slaves? Mostly heart attacks, cerebral hemorrhages, psychotic episodes. That sort of thing. Well, not on purpose. I mean, slaves are expensive. Still, we made the money back in the first few months, so the Mordino family wasn't too pissed at me. Hey, we had to make sure Jet wouldn't kill our customers. So, an off-record note, this is the same person that voice acted Boone from Fallout New Vegas. A lot of these people, especially voice actors, are extremely talented. 
But anyway, so after listening to Myron, the invention of Jet sounds pretty straightforward, right? In 2241, which is the year Fallout 2 takes place, the head of the Mordino crime family needed a chem that would help control the Redding population. Myron, after investigating while trying to make mushrooms of all things, found that the fumes from the Brahmin dung used as fertilizer produced an amphetamine effect. And through trial and error, Myron was able to produce Jet, which is basically a handheld form of this effect. Sounds cut and dry, right? Well, yes and no. As it turns out, there are some rumors and conflicting information that takes place inside the Fallout universe that really disputes Myron being the first person to invent Jet. I'm going to cover a few of the most popular reasons that conflict with the information Myron gives us inside of Fallout 2, some of which I'm able to disprove and others I can only provide speculation for. The first reason that people believe Myron did not invent Jet is from an intelligence check from the Chosen One. With high enough intelligence, the Chosen One can call bullshit, no pun intended, by telling Myron, I think you'd be surprised how much I know about your amateurish hallucinogenic amphetamine hybrid. I'm not convinced a child like you can just stumble across it, Myron. To which he gets visibly upset and replies, Amateurish? Am amateurish? Jet's pure genius, and don't you forget it. And I didn't stumble across it, I made it. <sighs> Two words. Brahmin shit. But if the Chosen One pries further into the process of making Jet, Myron just tells us all of the information that he did previously. So, the Chosen One accuses Myron of stumbling across previous Jet research and taking credit for the work. Myron denies this, claiming to create Jet himself. Let's talk about the details. Does it make sense that Myron would be the type of person to just have stumbled upon a recipe, created pre-war, and capitalized on the opportunity to claim the discovery for himself? Yeah, I think so. Do I personally believe that's actually what happened? No, I don't. I think that Jet is the solution for a very specific problem. Mordino wanted a chem that the miners over at Redding would get addicted to fast and work harder. I think that if there was already something pre-war that would work, they would have used it and skipped over Myron altogether. The Mordinos have their own pharmaceutical researchers after all. It makes sense that at least one of them would have known of something. And while the protein extract was pre-war, and it's entirely possible that somebody else discovered the side effect before Myron was born, which is a point I'm going to touch on a little bit later, Myron was the one that noticed the side effects of the extract while growing mushrooms, then took the side effect and refined it into Jet, even admitting to killing about 100 people in the process to get the recipe right. Myron also seems knowledgeable about pharmaceuticals. He's a kid, sure, and lacks experience. But he also has one of the largest crime families in New Reno providing lab equipment, assisted researchers, and guards. It seems very unlikely that Myron would need this kind of setup and all this time if he had prior knowledge of a recipe. I think that, at the very least, Myron took a previously discovered side effect that emulated an amphetamine and refined it into a strong, fast, and portable version, which is now known in Fallout 2 as Jet. And while Myron didn't invent the side effect, Jet itself is arguably a product of his research and imagination, a very solid claim to inventing the chem. So I don't agree with the Chosen One's intelligence check here. While it's entirely possible that Myron stumbled on the side effect that was previously discovered, the evidence inside the game suggests that the actual work went into creating the chem itself was all Myron. Another conflicting piece of dialogue inside of Fallout 2 is from a character named Angela Bishop the wife of another one of the crime families inside of New Reno. The story of Angela Bishop is kind of a sad one, but to sum it up for the purposes of this video, Angela was born in Vault City. While living in Vault City, she fell in love with this guy named John, one of the crime bosses inside of New Reno. Her love for John combined with an apparent addiction to Jet led Angela to be exiled from Vault City. She then married John Bishop, had a daughter, and moved into New Reno. The conflict in the story is by the time we meet Mrs. Bishop in Fallout 2, her daughter is in her late teens or early 20s, which is the same exact age as Myron, the so-called inventor of Jet. So the question is, if Mrs. Bishop was exiled from Vault City partially because of a Jet addiction years before Myron was born, then there's no way that Myron invented Jet, right? There's obviously no way Myron could invent Jet in this time frame. So who actually made it? Well, I agree that this piece of dialogue by Mrs. Bishop would be a very solid claim against Myron being the original inventor of Jet. 
if it wasn't already disproven 20 years ago. You remember Chris Avalon, one of the lead developers of Fallout 2? Well, it turns out that Chris released a series of documents in 2002 called the Fallout Bible. Just to clarify how long this was, again, this was 2002, not 2022. The Fallout Bible is a bit controversial in itself, which I'll touch on in a few minutes. But for context, the Fallout Bible is a series of documents that provide a lot of background information on the series of the Fallout games, the original 1 and 2. The Bibles were designed for, quote, for fans who already snagged the game and wouldn't mind knowing a bit more about what went on behind the scenes or what material actually never made it in, unquote. Okay, so how is the Fallout Bible relevant to the claim that Mrs. Bishop has been using jets since before Myron was born? In November of 2002, Fallout Bible 9 was released, where Chris Avalon actually clears up this misconception. Chris Avalon's reply, when asked about this conflict with Myron's age, was, quote, you know what? You're right. That was a mistake on my part. Myron is supposed to be 17 to 20, but that kind of messes things up if you take the bishops into account. I had always thought that he had made Jet recently, within a few years, so that Mordino could rise to power. Myron really did invent Jet. He's really, really smart, and really, really annoying. So ignore the bishops and their messed up rendition of events. They've been taking too much Jet anyway. That was a direct quote made from a lead designer calling the entire piece of conflicting dialogue a mistake, even suggesting to not listen to the bishops due to their brain deterioration from chem use, as well as directly saying that Myron was the one who invented Jet. For me, at least that completely settles it. Mrs. Bishop is a Jet addict, and the Jet use has deteriorated her brain so much that her memory doesn't work as well as it should. But wait, I mentioned earlier that the Fallout Bible is controversial. What did I mean by that? The Fallout Bible and the controversy surrounding its implications inside the Fallout lore really deserves its own video. This is extremely oversimplified, but to provide some context for the sake of this video, in 2022, Chris Avalon released a tweet saying that the aspects in the Fallout Bible before Fallout 3 are not canon. While this is a pretty straightforward statement, it's actually incorrect in terms of how the game is developed evidenced by current Fallout developers even admitting that parts of the Fallout Bible are used on a case-by-case -case basis for development. So what does this mean for Jet? Well, it honestly depends on how you feel about the Fallout Bible as a whole. In my opinion, the statements made in the Fallout Bible regarding Jet should be canon, because it's simply a developer's statement that directly clarifies a misconception in some of the game's dialogue, and isn't anything crazy like an unreleased feature or food, item, healing item, or enemy. And the final lore conflict that I want to share is quite simple, although I don't have a black and white answer for it. Assuming that Jet, as we know it, was invented post-war in the year 2241, it makes perfect sense that Jet should only be found in post-war areas, right? Well, it's unfortunately not that simple. Inside of Fallout 3 and 4, Jet can be found all across the wasteland. The fact that Fallout 2 took place on opposite side of the country is surprisingly not that big of a deal. We have evidence of people going back and forth across coasts all the time, Kellogg for example. It makes sense that Jet would be found inside of these games, even though they're based on the east coast instead of on the west coast. The conflict arises, however, because Jet can also be found in places exclusively pre-war, such as safes and vaults, where Jet should have never been if it was created post-war. So that part throws an entire wrench in the idea of Jet being something made exclusively post-war. Like I mentioned, there isn't a concrete answer as to why this is, but I've read a few interesting opinions both inside and outside of lore, which I wanted to share a few. I mentioned earlier that the protein extract was pre-war, and I thought it's entirely possible that somebody else discovered the side effects before Myron was born. Some players have speculated that, because of this reason, other people were able to create their own vials before the bombs dropped, and that's why they're found in pre-war containers. I disagree with this idea, simply because 100 people died while testing Jet through Myron's refinement process, and I find it extremely unlikely that somebody pre-war could just get up and guess the correct recipe on the first shot, without killing anybody. The reason why I think that Jet can be found in these pre-war containers is simply because Bethesda overlooked this lore when configuring the loot tables for these games. And this claim is actually evidenced by Fallout 76, where Jet can't be found. 
Fallout 76 takes place in the year 2102, almost 140 years before Jet was created by Myron. Bethesda does have a reputation of changing, or in some cases ruining, lore that was previously established by the Fallout games. I feel like if this was the case for Jet, however, then Jet would not have been included in Fallout 76. So long story short, I don't feel like Bethesda did this on purpose. It's most likely just an oversight or a mistake by a developer somewhere on the loot tables. But that's all I have regarding the controversy surrounding Jet, the most talked about Kim in the Fallout series. But before you go, I want to end this video with a hilarious joke that I found while doing research for this video. During the end credits of Fallout 2, we learn the fate of Myron after the defeat of the Enclave. Myron died less than a year after the defeat of the Enclave, stabbed by a Jet addict while drinking in the den. His discovery of Jet was quickly forgotten, and now there is no one who remembers his name. Which prompted one YouTube user named The Last Baby Man to write, quote, nobody remembered him, not even Bethesda. All get right. Please take cover until the danger has been eliminated. Greetings, fellow office employees.